Imagine you're someone living with autism, or the parent of a child who is. And now imagine that there's a pill that you could take to cure it. Would you take it? Would you give it to your child? Would that be a good thing? These are some questions that are commonly asked in the autism community. Dr. Stephen Shore, a well-known individual on the spectrum, has said he's not interested in a cure. However, Dr. Robert Nassif, a psychologist and a parent of a young man with severe autism, has said he would give this pill to his son immediately. Because for his son, autism is tremendously disabling. So your answer to this question might be different depending on where you fall on the autism spectrum. The universe of people affected by autism is large. It's the fastest growing developmental disability, affecting 1 to 2 percent of children and adults worldwide. The prevalence here in the United States is 1 in 68, and in New Jersey, 1 in 41. The costs are high. A University of California Davis study estimated the total cost of care for individuals with autism in our country in 2015 was $268 billion. And this is estimated to rise to $461 billion by the year 2025. This number represents more than double the combined costs of stroke and hypertension. For families, it costs six times more to raise a child with autism. So what is autism? Autism is a developmental disorder that impacts people's development, right? Many areas of development. Social communication is one of them. Sometimes social interaction and communication are categorized together because they're so intertwined in all of our relationships, how we make friends, how we keep friends. And it's also intertwined with understanding nonverbal communication, right? So, for example, if the event organizers gave me one of these, I would know it was time to wrap up. But for someone with autism, that's very difficult for them to understand and to act on. Individuals with autism also have difficulty in communication with taking what we say literally, right? Literal interpretation. Here, if you can read the instructions on this worksheet, it says, write the following words in alphabetical order. Can you see how the student alphabetized the words? Right? He alphabetized the letters of the words. And so this is not how most people would approach this. But for someone with autism, they're taking a very literal approach to the instructions. Right? And this is just one of the specific language impairments in autism. And approximately 25% of individuals with autism have no spoken language at all. In autism, there's also restricted and repetitive behavior. This could be resistance to changes in routine, like if you remember Dustin Hoffman's character in Rain Man, right? He only wanted to shop at Kmart, have to go to Kmart, had to be Kmart, right? It could also be repetitive behavior, such as hand flapping or rocking. And on a dangerous note, for a third of children on the spectrum, this repetitive behavior takes the form of self-injurious behavior, perhaps biting themselves or hitting their heads on hard surfaces. So if this is autism, then what is the spectrum? The spectrum is a wide range of abilities and deficits in social communication and behavior. Just last week, we held a conference, and one of the talks that was given was um, presented by a young man. And it was entitled, A Love Letter to My Future Wife from Your Autistic Husband. Right? Individuals on this side of the spectrum typically view their autism as a form of neurodiversity. Neurodiversity is the idea that conditions like autism and ADHD are a natural variation in the human genome and the human condition. Autism is not viewed as a disability that needs to be treated or cured. In fact, the idea of eradicating autism would be understandably offensive to people who embrace their neurodiversity. But autism is also 
a young man who has the developmental level of a toddler and hurts himself so often that he needs a team of specialists to analyze and treat his challenging behavior. So here we have the extremes, right? We have someone who's socially different, but in other ways, very competent. You can think of the Big Bang Theory Sheldon Cooper or the new show The Good Doctor, a surgeon with autism who's saving lives every week. And we also have the other end of the spectrum, adults who need 24-7 supervision and assistance with basic everyday tasks such as taking care of their own hygiene, making food, and being safe in the community. As Judith Newman, the author of the book To Siri with Love, has said, the autism narratives are often about the extremes. And we can see why these extremes are interesting. But as Judith Newman and all of us in the autism community know, there are hundreds of thousands of individuals in the middle of the spectrum, each with their own unique and interesting story. So let's be clear. There is no pill to cure autism right now, but thankfully there is treatment. Treatment that can teach individuals new skills, improve their quality of life, and give everyone hope. For many, that treatment is Applied Behavior Analysis, or ABA. ABA is a scientific, individualized, and compassionate approach to understanding and improving behavior. Approximately 30% of kids with autism who participate in intensive, early, high-quality ABA behaviorally recover from autism. That's right, 30% go on to be indistinguishable from their peers. And the other 70% make substantial progress. That's the amazing news. The tragic news is that fewer than 20% of children with autism access this treatment. The first child with autism I worked with was a little boy named Christopher. He was an adorable two-year-old. But he did not have access to this treatment. And today, he's a 26-year-old man. He's representative of the community in a lot of ways. He has an intellectual disability. He has some adaptive behavior and some behavioral challenges. And his parents find it very difficult to find and pay for activities that keep him safe and meaningfully engaged. So how can we help Christopher and everyone with autism? We can help by investing in research to better understand the causes and the cures for those who want them. We can help by supporting families whose lives are more stressful than we can ever measure. And we can help by advocating for federal and state policies that allocate funding for high quality treatment needed by millions of children and adults with autism. When you think of autism, I would like you, I encourage you to think about individuals because it's so much broader than just the label, right? The spectrum is so much more than this label. I encourage you to think about individuals, their abilities, their needs, their preferences, their personalities. And I encourage you to look beyond the label. Thank you.